strike on it, forces Callender into a save down to his left. Big save there. Joseph Martinez from 25 yards on, tries to curl. Negroni trying to flick it through, and it comes to the back post, and it's a debut goal for Serhi Krebsov. Hits it off the post, Borgelin, saved off the left, Borgelin again, it's scored! It's Miami, the comfortable lead. Inter Miami suffering two defeats in the league, but are through to the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup quarterfinal. So success coming in the cup and a bounce back win over Nashville SC after losing to them in the week just ago as Inter Miami now try and push ahead to the weekend as take on CF Montreal. Chris Whittingham and Kieran Gibbs here for the Inter Miami show. We welcome you to it here on the Inter Miami YouTube channel. Of course, the Inter Miami club room on Apple TV and Kieran, let's focus on league play as Inter Miami coming off of that game against Orlando City. Let's take a look at the highlights of that game now as it was a derby night in South Florida and Miami are trying to bounce back from that midweek dropping of points to Nashville SC against their neighbors from just up the road here in the state of Florida and Orlando would get the scoring started as a long throw would come in from Cesar Araujo and Urchan Gara flicking it beyond Drake Callender just catching Miami a bit out there to open the scoring and Gara has been on good form. We talked about him on last week's show in terms of needing to keep Orlando's strikers at bay, but here would be the leveler, Leo Campana from range, Kieran. Oh, it's an absolute beauty. We said last week, actually, didn't we, about Leo is able to score many different types of goals, left foot, right foot, um, headers, so good in the air, but this, this is, uh, he'll remember this one for a long time. Um, I love the way he tries to get back around the ball after taking that second touch. Um, his the strike was brilliant and no chance for the keeper. But Orlando would get that vital third goal in the game. Martin Ojeda on the nice flick from Cara to make it 2-1. Drake Callender would have to come up with a big save on a long-distance effort from Araujo, and he would deal with the danger. But in the end, Orlando would get that third goal and beat Inter Miami by three goals to one on the night. Frustration for the Herons as they would suffer defeat at the hands of Orlando City. The stats at full time showing Miami with the majority of possession but unable to do enough with it. Kieran, as we look forward, what do you think Miami can do to reclaim some of their form that they had in the league prior to this two-match losing streak in MLS? Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's never easy losing uh, a derby game. Um, I'm sure the boys will, will be hurting from that. Um, I felt like it was a it was a slow it was a slow start to the game, um, especially for a derby, uh, which is which is quite rare. Um, I felt like the boys picked up a little bit of momentum um, after, especially after Leo's fantastic goal, uh, but they just couldn't get enough to to get back in and just kind of they they lost their footing in the end, lost their concentration a little bit, um, which I think will be the, the the most disappointing thing for for Phil. Um, but you know, the, the the biggest thing that they can do now is is respond quickly. You know, for for the fans and um, that they they've shown in the last few games prior to to Saturday that you know they've got the ability to, to win games and, and actually dominate games as well. So um, they just need to get back to basics. I would like to see them move the ball a little bit quicker. To be honest, um, I felt like that was probably the biggest difference that I've seen in this game compared to the few games before that I feel like um, they just lacked a little bit of switching of switching of the play um, you know shifting their back four um, and and supply up to Leo and, and Joseph which I think is key because you know we know how how good they are and they're born goal scorers both of them so you know they need as much supply as possible and I think that that was just lacking the other night. And we'll talk a little bit more about the game against Montreal away from home at the weekend in the league. But Miami looking for a bounce back effort in that one. One point of positivity is the continued run of the side of Benjamin Kremaski. He has been sensational in that number 10 position. And it's remarkable for a player of his age to continue to get start after start. You can see him involved in that team photo in the Atlanta game. But just continuing to make big contributions, Kieran. Yeah, it's great to see him getting a lot of game time. It shows how much the manager likes him. Probably uh, didn't expect to see as much of him, especially this early in the season. Um, but he's he's been given a chance, and especially with other injuries, he looks like he's relishing it. Um, I think with players like uh, Ben Hard, David, um, with the, with these guys, it's just because of their age and it's their it's their breakthrough season. You just want to make sure that you you manage their development and also their expectation. Um, you know they're young, they are they're vibrant, they're hungry, 
and sometimes you just need to find the right balance to get them as much exposure to this level of football um, but also realizing that they're going to need to gain experience like slowly and, and I think that that will be the best but you know they've had such a good start that it's yeah. hard for him it's hard for him to take them take them out you know yeah go um, through the ups and downs of working with young players that that's something that Inter Miami will have to do but Ben Ha has been up to the challenge repeatedly for this Inter Miami team speaking of young players under 20 World Cup going on right now in Argentina and the no doubt headline for Inter Miami from their standpoint is the players that are with the Dominican Republic under 20 side. Israel Boatride did start in their group stage opener against Nigeria and then Edison Ascona in that game not only scoring from the penalty spot but getting the first ever goal for the Dominican Republic at any FIFA competition. Obviously they play in CONCACAF but for the first time making a World Cup and Edison Ascona getting a goal. That's a huge moment for a player of such young age who's done some with Inter Miami but he'll be remembered in the Dominican Republic forever. Yeah, and Eddie's such a great guy, a super talented player, um, blessed, blessed, born to, to, to play football, the way he glides across the pitch, uh, makes the game look easy at times, and um, he's had a few injury problems as well, so I'm sure that'll be such a big moment for him, for his family. Uh, and there's just so many inspiring stories at the moment coming from from the the youth, you know, which yeah. is which is good. You've got David, uh, Ben Ha, Eddie as well, and um, these are just great for the region. You know, there's a lot of talent here, and when you actually see that it's possible, um, it, it's great. It's great for the for the city of Miami to to you know see you know what what you can do if you really put your mind to it. Yeah, and there's a lot of potential in this area, and other clubs in MLS have brought through young players, but not as quickly as we've seen here at Inter Miami. It usually takes 10, 15 years, and you start to see players coming through the first team. I, I cover a lot of the league, and the speed with which Miami are starting to put some academy players on the on the field is absolutely remarkable. Now, going back to that Orlando game a little bit, I want to shout out the supporters. Of course, you guys watch us here on Apple TV and on the YouTube channel, and my goodness, was the atmosphere incredible for the Orlando match just gone. We knew that it was coming. We knew that La Familia would come strong in this game. And my goodness, the TIFOs, the banners, the noise made throughout the game. It was everything we expected and more. Yeah, I mean, I think just personally for for um, for the fans, it's it's probably hard for them to realize how much of an effect that they have on the players sometimes. And so, you know, I know firsthand from playing here that um, they're such a great fan base. They, uh, they're really together. They, they lift the boys. They're non-stop throughout, the throughout the whole game every week. Um, and it's, it gives the boys a great lift, such a great lift. Yeah, it was brilliant to see on Saturday night. Now let's look ahead to this upcoming Saturday night as it's time for Kieran's three points. For three points, what are Inter Miami going to do to get a victory away at Stad Saputo as Inter Miami take on CF Montreal this weekend? Kieran, what do we got this week? Okay, so the first thing this week uh, is definitely going to be keeping Bryce quiet because I think he's a, a super talented little player and I know he'll be up for this game, you know, playing against his old team. So it's important that the boys, you know, stay on him, don't give him too much time and space because, you know, he likes those clever little passes and um, I think that's going to be important. The second thing is tempo with the ball. Um, that's what I felt was lacking in the last game. Montreal like to press high, so I think we need to move the ball quick um, and shift their back four and midfield so that we can create spaces. And the third thing is supply, supply up to Leo and Joseph. Um, they're our goal scorers, they're the boys that we rely on to, to get the victories, uh, but they need the ball. They need the ball, so, you know, I want to see, even if sometimes we have to go to third line or straight to the second line, um, sometimes you have to change the way you play a little bit. Might, it might not hurt to go a little bit more direct at times, up to Leo, um, and then feed off of him. Those are going to be my three things this week. And Inter Miami, of course, taking on a team that they did trade players with earlier this year. As you mentioned, Bryce Duke, formerly with Inter Miami, along with Ari Lasseter. The two of them have been starting a fair bit for Hernan Losada's side. And Cabal Miller will go back up to Montreal for the first time since moving to Inter Miami. That's this Saturday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. Be sure to watch the game. We thank you for joining us this week on the Inter Miami show. We'll... Talk again next week after this Montreal match and a busy run of fixtures for Inter Miami. May has been very busy for the club, and we'll talk to you next week on the Inter Miami Show.